This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to morning prayer from St. Peter's Ipsley this Monday morning. My name is Peter McLaren and I'll be leading prayers this morning with my wife Chris. And we're both readers at the Church of Ipsley. We'll be using the outline from morning prayer in ordinary time, Monday, from our order of service book. And in our thoughts, we'll be considering a section of the Book of Acts. And as we see the development of the early church, we may find there are points that God brings to our attention to be considered by our church, whether this is from St. Peter's Ipsley or in your church, wherever it may be situated. So, O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. We now have a song of God's compassion from Psalm 103. And it's also, in a sense, our confession. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us. Neither will he keep his anger for ever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth. So great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west. So far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower in the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone. And its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from old and endures forever on those who fear him. And his righteousness on his children's children. On those who keep his covenant. And remember his commandment to do them. So glory, glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And just one thought from this psalm. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our sins from us. You know, if it said as far as the north is from the south, you can actually measure that distance. But you know, if you go east, you can continue to go east forever and never reach the west. Mm. There's a thought. So the night has passed. The day lies open before us. And let us pray with one heart and mind. And the psalm that is set for us today is actually Psalm 82. So we're going to have that read now. And the thought from the psalm is, Arise, O God, and judge the earth. God has taken his stand in the council of heaven. In the midst of the gods, he gives judgment. How long will you judge unjustly? And show such favour to the wicked. You were to judge the weak and the orphan. Defend the rights of the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. 
Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have no knowledge or wisdom. They walk on still in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Therefore I say that though you are gods, and all of you children of the Most High, nevertheless you shall die like mortals, and fall like one of their princes. Arise, O God, and judge the earth. For it is you that shall take all nations for your possession. God our Deliverer, when the foundations are shaken and justice has departed, defend the poor and needy, and give your people strength to fight all wrong. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the reading set for today is from the book of Acts and it's chapter 6. And this is the account of new leaders being brought into the church and the start of a special ministry of one of them, Stephen. And the passage splits, splits conveniently into verses 1 to 7 and 8 to 15. So first of all, I'll read verses 1 to 7. Now in those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmias, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. Now the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. So growth brought problems, problems of administration. In the multicultural milieu of the early church in Jerusalem, a racial problem began to arise. One group the Greek-speaking international group complained that their widows were being neglected and the church widow's allowance was going to the Hebrew-speaking local widows in an unfair way. Now, this brings two thoughts for us for today. Do we have widows in our congregation? And how are we supporting them? Nowadays, there is in one sense the state old age pension. But I have noticed in our church, and I trust in yours as well, there are some people who regularly bring older people in their cars to church services and activities as well as taking them on medical appointments, etc. Now that is an outworking of this biblical principle in our generation. But there is an awkward question. Is there any group in our church that gets more than its fair share of church resources? And another group that's 
rather losing out. It's very easy for that to happen even today, you know. Well, what was the solution? Call a church meeting. And this seems to have been not just a meeting of the church leaders, but a mass meeting of the whole congregation. Mm. These meetings are important even today. Notice too that the ministers cannot do everything, for their priority is twofold. Ministry of the word and prayer, and it still is. But of course, to pray for members of the congregation, the ministers need to know the members of the congregation, which involves a pastoral aspect as well. So prayerfully, a group of seven were chosen and commissioned. We read about that in verse 6. And we know quite a lot from Acts about two of these people, Stephen and Philip. But about the other five, we know nothing. Okay. There are two further awkward thoughts from this. Notice, I have not called these seven at any time deacons, even though many Christians call them that. In this passage, they are never actually called deacons, though words related to the Greek word for deacon do occur. Notice, too, the requirements for good administrators, people of good repute, full of the spirit and wisdom. You know, to run the administrative side of a church needs two skills, godliness and canniness. You needed both in the apostles' day. You need both today. However, remember that wisdom and education are not the same thing. Having a degree doesn't necessarily make you wise. Notice too, from verse 7, that either through prayer or the ministry of the word, or through practical care, or through all of these, the word of God continued to increase. And this increase was not just in terms of the common citizens, but also among the ministerial class. A great number of the priests became obedient to the faith. We come now to verses 8 to 15, which describes the ministry of one of the seven, and that is Stephen. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freed men, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit <coughs> with which he was speaking. Then they secretly instigated men who said, We've heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man never seeks to ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs 
that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like that of an angel. Wow. Stephen's ministry certainly expanded beyond ex organising the, the church social care fund. And he had both grace and power in his ministry. God's favour had fallen on Stephen, and that favour was shown by Stephen in his ministry to others. And that is the meaning of the word grace. He also had a powerful personality and was able to put forward God's truth clearly and forcibly. That is power. And from the original word for power, dunamis, we, of course, get our English word, dynamite. Oh, that we might have more grace and power in our ministry today. Now, ministry, you know, doesn't have to be to everybody from everyone. Stephen's ministry seems to have been solely to the Greek-speaking Jews who'd been slaves in part of the Roman Empire but had been free. They were freed men as against another group that were called the free men. Mm, one letter makes a lot of difference. And they came from Cyrene and Alexandria. Now that's North Africa. They came from Cilicia and Asia, which were areas in the ancient world we would regard as being in Turkey today. Now Stephen had the ability to argue about the truth of the Christian faith with others. And he seems to have done it so well that his opponents could only work by telling lies about him. And so have him arrested on a charge of blasphemy. Verse 13. As they looked at Stephen in the court, they seemed to see the glory of God on his face. Like Moses had shown, after he met God in Exodus 34, from verses 29 to the end. We certainly need people with those gifts today. And tomorrow, we will start to have a look at Stephen's trial, which turns out to be the longest continuous passage in Acts, longer than any other of Paul or Peter's sermons. Now we will have a song of deliverance as our canticle, and this comes from Isaiah chapter 12. And we say, All the earth Shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. And has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water. From the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praise who's triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst 
is the Holy One of Israel. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Amen. We come now to our prayers of intercession. And we're going to pray for those on holiday, for peace in our towns, and grace and power in our ministers today. So a prayer for those on holiday. Yeah. Oh Lord, we thank you at this summer season for those who've got time off and have gone away to visit new or old places, to meet up with relatives and friends and be able to share with others some of the good things that you've given them and to share in the knowledge of the good things you've done for family and friends. So bless them, O Lord, we pray, who are away from our fellowship at the moment. Give them journeying mercies, we pray, and where they are, may they meet up with your people and be able to rejoice in your goodness to them and to others. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray now for peace, not just in Redditch, but across the towns and cities of our wonderful country. I cannot help but have seen so many things that have gone wrong over the past 10 days or so. So a moment of quiet whilst we just think of those things that we have seen and bring them to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you do indeed reign on high. Mm. We thank you too that you are interested in each of our lives, in the day-to-day -day minutiae, as it were. But Lord, we are troubled and disturbed by what we've been seeing on our television and hearing on our radio about those who have sought violence. Lord, we just commend our police force to you and all those who have responsibility concerning these issues and we pray against the mindless violence the senseless violence that we have seen i pray that people's hearts and minds lord might be turned to peace Amen. might even lord be turned to you we do pray for those who have suffered the death of loved ones in recent days, mm. especially the families of those three young girls. Amen. Lord, just comfort, be with them. Help them to see that your hand is at work, though it might not seem like it at this time. Mm. So, Lord, we commend our town of Redditch and the other towns and cities and places across this amazing country to you asking that you will give wisdom to our leaders, our councillors, our MPs, our policemen and women. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And as we've heard this morning, O Lord, that Stephen had grace and power, we pray for our ministers today. We pray that they might indeed have your grace, your favour upon them, and that those who they speak to, both individually and from the pulpits of our churches, might be shown your grace through what they say. We pray too that their ministries might be ministries of dynamis, power that the power of God might come into our churches, in our nations. And we pray, O oh Lord, 
that even in this summer a great number might come to a knowledge of the faith in Jesus. Maybe even for some of our younger friends mm -hmm. through Christian camps and house parties. Mm -hmm. So we pray your grace and power on those who lead such events today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So our calling for the day. Lord our God, as with all creation we offer you the life of this new day, give us grace to love and serve you. To the praise of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 And now will you join with me as we say the family prayer that Jesus taught us. And if you know it in a traditional or different language, please use that this morning. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And God bless you and we trust we will meet again tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>